Here's Brody Brazil. Well, this time last year, the Colorado football team got off to a hot start. Their brand new head coach, Deion Sanders, was gaining a lot of attention. But this time around, like the season has just got off to a very rough start for Dion. And specifically, like looking back at last year, what the Buffs did with their record. But now his interactions with the media are a little contentious, a little interesting, a little negative, and one specific media member has this beef with Dion and vice versa. They've been going back and forth. We'll get into that in just a second. I'm calling this Dion versus the media, but I also am going to start this video in a place that maybe you didn't expect. Because if we're really investigating the character and the personality of Dion Sanders, this also happened within the last week or two, and this is not getting a lot of attention. This is not getting talked about, but before anything else... This was from a Yahoo Sports article, which said, In partnership with Colorado Name, Image, and Likeness Collective, 5430 Alliance and Elevations Credit Union, CU head coach Deion Sanders helped open savings accounts for the children of his players. To be clear, some players on the Colorado football team are fathers, right? So what he's doing is opening savings accounts, not for those players, but for those players' children. Each account is starting out with $2,121, a nod to Sanders' number 21 jersey he wore during his NFL career, and those players were encouraged to make small contributions moving forward. Right? Like, uh, uh, gives me the goosebumps to think about somebody who in a time and an age is looking at players and all the NIL deals, and yeah, you get a new watch and a big gold chain and a car and this and that and clothes, and you're an influencer, but you know what? To now open the door to something like this, which he's doing, I applaud this, okay? And this is what Dion is capable of. This is what Dion could and should be bringing to Colorado and college sports. But now we get into the whole Denver Post situation. And Dion has been refusing to answer questions from select media members. I know there was somebody from CBS Local who uh, didn't get their question answered in his season opening press conference. He said, I don't even like CBS as a whole. It's like, what does it have to do with this person? He just works for the company. Anyway, but now he's refusing to answer any questions from columnist Sean Keeler of the Denver Post. Now, Keeler, according to the school, this is not like Dion's rules. Like the school is also going along with this, to be quite clear. Uh, Dion's saying this and the school is backing him up. Keeler can still attend practice and media sessions. He's not closed out. This is not a ban. But Dion is basically saying, I won't talk to you in these media situations. You can use quotes uh, for my answers to other people, but I I, I will not answer your questions. From the Denver Post, they responded to what exactly was the back and forth here when asked for specific examples of how Keeler personally attacked Sanders. And by the way, I should be clear about that. Keeler, as a columnist, had been critical about Dion, Coach Prime, if that's what You want to call him? I'd still call him Deion Sanders. Uh, Critical of Deion, critical of the program, a sports information staffer cited Keeler's use of phrases such as, quote, false prophet, deposition Deion, planet prime, Bruce Lee of BS. (laughs) That one got me laughing a little bit. The Deion Kool-Aid and circus, I suppose, maybe in, in reference to where the program stands. And that, again, is the Denver Post's explanation of what they've been told from the school of why Sean Keeler is not allowed to just ask questions of Deion Sanders. And obviously this story is regional to the state of Colorado and Denver and Boulder, but it's now expanded nationwide. And a lot of the big time pundits are weighing in on this, including Stephen A. Smith. Quote, if you are Keeler, write the columnist from the Denver Post, here's the bottom line. Your attacks seem personal, off-putting, offensive, etc., In the case of primetime Deion Sanders, his mentality is talk about me all you want to. Talk about my football program all you want to. But this guy, Keeler, has gotten too personal. And he's gotten very, very personal. And you talk to people close to Deion, they say Keeler says he's doing what he's done in terms of eviscerating the program because it's good for his, Keeler's, bottom line, particularly monetarily. These are the kind of things that they've indicated about him, Keeler. End quote. That's what Stephen A. Smith is saying. And I'll get to some reactions on all of this in just a second. Then there's Paul Feinbaum to ESPN. Paul Feinbaum obviously covers a lot of SEC sports, college football guy. Quote, he's going a little bit the other way on this. Coach Prime is showing that he is not ready for prime time. I find this whole thing disgraceful. 
Dion, they want to talk about love and joy, and that's been the cornerstone of what he seems to be spewing out. But treating reporters like this seems like we're in some autocratic country. This is not America. The fact that it's in his contract to not answer these questions is even more absurd. Don't forget, he did this at Jackson State. This is a trait of Deion Sanders. He wants to have it his way, and I find him to be a bully and a hypocrite. Quite frankly, as someone who's been a fan of his throughout his entire career, even at Colorado, I am mortified by his actions. I mean, it's one thing to not agree with somebody's actions, but he's just not answering one person's questions and being a little bit prickly with the media. After some criticism, and yeah, he should be better about this. We'll get into the we'll get into the, the takeaways in just a second. But mortified by his actions, that that seems quite far. Okay, the takeaways. Could it be as America tries to always find somebody in the right and somebody in the wrong here? Somebody's doing it the right way. Somebody's got it all wrong. Could it be that there's actually two wrongs on display here? Like Keeler, you're a columnist, and I think we need to separate this. Are you a journalist? Are you a reporter? In some ways, you're a little bit of that. But a columnist, I want to be clear, is like a pundit. It's like somebody who's just got a YouTube channel. And maybe they don't they don't have to be held to specific journalism standards. They don't take a bias one way or the other. Like Columnists are about their opinion. I think so many people get that wrong about media. This is not somebody who's trying to be necessarily fair and objective. They're trying to point out things and they're trying to get you to read their articles click their links, and so on and so on. So to the point about Stephen A. Smith uh, saying that uh, Keeler was doing this for monetary reasons, I mean, when your bosses at the Denver Post say, hey, we need more clicks, and he's looking at that and saying, I could write about that, that's what he's going to do. Now, is that fair? Is that right? Can you do that without making it personal? I absolutely think so. And so when I go back to this and say, could it be that there's two wrongs on display, can Keeler be his his critical self, but do it in a like constructive and professional way? Yeah. I mean, I don't know that I've ever, I'm going to use it again. I don't know that I've ever used the term Bruce Lee of BS if I'm being critical about something. Like point it out, let the fact stand for itself. You don't need to be the one putting all the you know, the fun, the fun uh, mic drop moments out there. You don't need to want, be the one to, to clap back at everybody. You don't need to want, be the one to slam, to slam everybody. Just put out the facts. Be right about that and then move on. Who can disagree with facts as part of your opinion? And everyone should be held to some standards here. And again, I've, I've seen some of the Keeler criticisms. He keeps writing about Colorado, by the way. He's not stopping what he's doing. Dion's probably not going to stop banning him. I'll get to this final point in a second. Like, where does this end? Where does this go? But if I'm looking at Dion, right? Like, I think we've already made clear that Keeler, as a columnist, can probably take a better approach here. Dion Sanders could do worse. He could get up and flip the table. He could say, you know what? I'm not even allowing you here at our practice facility. Get lost. Um, I'll ban you from this place. He's not also coming back with uh, necessarily like explicit remarks or he's not blowing out a ton of steam. Like he's not, he is making this personal, but he could do worse, right? He's not doing worse. But the main point to set all that up is to say, and set this up is to say that he could do better. Like Dion, you've been in the spotlight. You've been criticized as a baseball player, as a football player, as a public figure, as a professional athlete for multiple decades now, like since the 90s, dude. And so when somebody tries to get under your skin and tries to push your buttons, like there is a high road way to do this for Deion Sanders. Same way for Keeler. Like take the high road and do this. You don't need to be doing this on the low road. Take the high road and win that way. And if you're Deion Sanders, you are leading by example. I hate to say it, but these are now college kids that you are a head coach of. And if you really want a job in the NFL, I mean, how you handle yourself here, people are watching this. You could do better than this. You can lay him out without having to let him ask questions and then politely respond to his questions and give him only what you want and give him the clarity that you want. You don't have to, by by shutting somebody off, You're kind of letting them win the battle if you're Deion Sanders. So that brings me to the final point here. Does this all just continue to get messier? Like, do we have a standoff at some point? I mean, where does this go? How does this end? 
Keeler's going to keep writing. Dion's going to keep ignoring. Then somebody's going to try and raise the stakes and raise the temperature and wait till games happen. We, <laughs> we haven't even got to games yet. Wait until the Buffs lose a game that they should have won. Uh-oh. How do you think that interaction is going to go? So I'm interested to see how this gets resolved. And again, I just wanted to point that out at the beginning. Dion is capable of good things. He could be really good for college football. I think this situation, somebody antagonizing him, and I will say it, like, on both sides here, there's there's a little bit of wrong on both sides. To think that one side is right or wrong completely is not the case. Both sides can do better, but Dion has been doing this for a very long time, and he can do better. He can be the one to start making this better if he wants. So that's my thoughts on Dion and the buffs, and the media, and what's going on up in Boulder. You've made it here to the end of this video. I really appreciate that. Thumbs up down below. That helps me and this channel and this video. I would like that, but I would also love it. If you just take one second right now before this ends, go down there, make sure you've hit that subscribe button, please. That way, I definitely get to see you back here next time.